everybody. Welcome to another episode of Master the NEC, where we talk about the National Electrical Code and all things electrically related. My name is Paul Abernathy, your host, and welcome to today's video, where we're going to talk about sizing grounding electrode conductors. Okay, in our example, we're going to size the grounding electrode conductor for a service. We're not going to deal with detached structures and sizing the grounding electrode conductor for your detached building. We'll save that for a different episode. We're going to stick with services. So in this case, we need to size this grounding electrode conductor for this 400 amp service that's being supplied by 500 KC mil copper. So over here on the right, you see four different types of grounding electrodes. The one thing that they all have in common is that all of these types of grounding electrodes utilize table 250.66. Okay, so sizing this grounding electrode conductor. Now, since they all use table 250.66 and we're talking about the same 500 KC mil, they're all gonna result in the same size grounding electrode conductor. So to save time, let's just do the water pipe ground because the same process is gonna be applied to all of these. Now, water pipe ground. Let's assume now that we have a water pipe ground that complies with 250.52A1. That means 10 feet in contact with the earth and we wanna size this grounding electrode conductor. Okay, how do we do it? So two things we need to know, what type of electrode we're dealing with and we know we're dealing with a water pipe. And secondly, what size conductors we have supplying the system or the service conductors that are coming into the system. So here we know these are 500 KC mil. So we're gonna go to the National Electrical Code and we go to 250.66, sizing grounding electrode conductors. Now it says right here that when you're sizing grounding electrode conductors, then the size cannot be less than given in table 250.66, okay? So that's what we're utilizing for these type of electrodes, okay? Now you'll notice that it also says, except as permitted in 250.66A through C, that's for ground rods, metal pipes, and metal plates, concrete case electrodes, and ground rings, okay? That has nothing to do with the four that we show here. Okay, so just remember for these four, you wanna directly go to table 250.66. So let's size it. So we have a water pipe ground, we have 500 KC mil. So we go to the National Electrical Code, we go to table 250.66, and we find, we know that it's copper, we find which of the column we're in, and it's 350 through 600, so our 500 KC mil falls right in the middle here. Then we go over here to the right, and if we have a copper grounding electrode conductor, then it needs to be a one ot. If we have an aluminum or copper clad aluminum grounding electrode conductor, then it would be a three ot. Now, one thing to remember: if you're using aluminum or copper clad aluminum grounding electrode conductors, you do have a note three down here that reminds you of the installation restrictions in 250.64, and that has to do with terminating aluminum conductors, uh, aluminum grounding electrode conductors uh, within 18 inches of the earth. Now there was a change in the 2020 code that allows you to terminate less than 18 inches as long as you did so in a listed and identified enclosure that was listed and identified for the environment to which it was being installed, okay? So if that was the case, then you can terminate the grounding electroconductor of the aluminum or copper clad aluminum less than 18 inches, but they had to be within one of those listed and identified enclosures. Other than that, you can't terminate them within uh, you have to be at least 18 inches from the earth, okay? So that's your restrictions here. So I wanted to make sure that I covered that real quick with the notes, all right? So let's get back. So these are the electrodes that are gonna use table 250.66, okay? So remember that, it's all based on the size of the service conductors that are coming in, all right? Now, let's look at the allowances that we just saw here where it says, well, what if I don't wanna use a table because that's not all the electrodes that are available to me. So here it says, except as permitted in 250.66A through C. So those electrodes I just talked about earlier were rod pipe and plates, concrete and case electrodes and ground rings. So if I'm dealing with ground rods, a, uh, a metal pipe or a metal plate style electrode, then I can have a grounding electroconductor and it shall not be required to be larger than a six copper wire or a four aluminum wire. Okay, so I'm getting quite a bit less than what we required by this table, okay? Now there are some caveats to this. What that means is I can't go to a ground rod, a pipe or a plate and then continue on to another type of electrode 
and that electrode required a larger grounding electrode conductor. So I couldn't do that to utilize this allowance here, okay? So I can't go up from a, running a, a conductor to a ground rod or plate or pipe and then continue on, let's say, to a water pipe because a water pipe, as you saw earlier, utilizes table 250.66 and that required me to have a one aught copper or three aught aluminum. So that's not going to work. So if I want to use this allowance here, I can't extend from these electrodes to other electrodes that would require a larger grounding electroconductor or a bonding jumper between electrodes. Okay. So that's the caveat to being able to use this. Now that caveat also applies to B and C as well. Okay. So keep that in mind. Now, what about concrete encased electrodes? All right. So if I have a concrete encased electrode, then it says that the grounding electroconductor shall not be required, okay? It's not prohibited from being larger, but it's not required to be larger than a four AWG copper wire, okay? So if I have a concrete case electrode, then I could run four AWG copper wire as long as I didn't extend from that concrete and case electrode to another type of electrode that would generally require a larger GEC then I'm okay, I'm good to go, all right? So if that's the case, I can use option B here. It's a permitted use and that allows me, and that's a quite a bit less than what would be required if I use table 250.66, okay? Now, I don't have to use A, B, and C. If I wanna run and, and not use A, B, and C, and I wanna run a, a grounding electroconductor and utilize table 250.66, go for it but you're permitted to use A, B, and C. So most exams that you take, I would utilize the options to use A, B, and C. Now ground rings are a little different. So ground rings, it says in 250.52 when you're designing a ground ring that it can't be smaller than a two gauge, okay? And so if a two gauge is the ground ring and that's the size we choose, then it says right here that the grounding electroconductor shall not be required to be larger than the conductor used for the ground ring. So if my ground ring is two gauge, because it can't be smaller than two, it could be larger than two, but it can't be smaller than two gauge. If that's the case, then by virtue of the size of that ground ring, that's what the size of my grounding electroconductor would be. Okay, pretty simple, right? All right, so now let's move on to the notes. Well, we have three notes. We already covered the note three, which deals with the aluminum or copper clad aluminum termination within 18 inches of the earth. Now let's deal with note one. So in our example here, you saw we only had one set and these were 500 KC mills. Well, what if we have multiple sets, okay? And it could come from service drops, it could come from service laterals, it could come from service conductors overhead. However, the application, that's what we have right here. And so how do we size the grounding electroconductor in this application? Well, in this case, let's say we have a 1200 amp service which utilizes three sets of 600 KC mill as it states right here. So I've got an A, B, and C in this raceway, an A, B, C in this raceway, and an A, B, C phase in this raceway. Each one of them are 600 KC mil. So I'm just gonna utilize phase A. And so I take 600 in this raceway, 600 for phase A in this raceway, and 600 for phase A in this raceway. So I had 600 plus 600 plus 600. That's gonna give me the expected large phase, the largest service conductor for phase A. And that's gonna be 1800 KC mill. Now, if I'm dealing with one of these types of electrodes, it's pretty simple. Once I have the 1800 KC mill, then I'm just going to go where? To table 250.66. In this case, it would be over 1100 KC mill. So it would be a 3 aught copper or a 250 aluminum grounding electroconductor. So that's pretty simple application. Now, what if it was a rod pipe or plate or concrete encased or ground ring? in this application, then it wouldn't have to be larger than that is prescribed in A, B, and C. So yes, it can be a 1200 amp service that has ground rods and it would only require you a six copper grounding electroconductor, okay? That's the allowance of using A, B, and C in that application, all right? Now, what about note two? Note two is a little different because note two is talking about applications where I've got no service inch conductors, but I still need to size the grounding electroconductors. So I have conductors that are coming in, maybe under a building, coming up, and they're not considered service inch conductors. So 
what I have to do is I have to determine what my actual load is that's being served. And once I know what that load is being served, then I go select the conductors that can handle that load and we act like they're service entrance conductors. Once we determine the size of the conductors we need, even if they're parallels, then if they're parallels, you're gonna kind of do the same thing we did here in note one. You're gonna add them all up to find out what that largest service entrance conductor would be. And then if you're dealing with one of these type of electrodes, then you're gonna again go to table 250.66, uh, the table, and you're gonna select the grounding electrode conductor from there. If, again, it's a rod piper plate, concrete encased electrode, or ground ring, then you're simply going to choose it from A, B, and C. And that, again, that could be a 6-gauge copper or a 4-gauge aluminum for a rod piper plate, a 4-gauge copper for a concrete encased electrode, or a 2-gauge ground ring okay, for a ground ring. That would be your applications. Again, it wouldn't matter what the size of the service would be under that application. It's all based on knowing the conductors and the sizes. And again, so if you have any additional questions, feel free to email us at info at We're more than happy to answer your questions. Until next time, folks, stay safe and God bless.